Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Moon Knight. This is a Marvel Disney endeavor. This is a little weird. I'll start off with the fact that I enjoyed it, but I'm going to put this in a weird category Maybe sort of like WandaVision. I'll explain as I go on. Created by Jeremy Slater. It's starring Oscar Isaac. Of course, we have F. Murray Abraham, Ethan Hawke. There's a real slew of great actors in here, and it does elevate it a bit. Um, maybe too much. We'll get into that. Um... I really like the music, so I'll say the composer here was Hesham Nazia, if that's how it's pronounced. Now, this is the, I don't know what, like, this like the sixth fucking seventh um, show, or six. It only really came out, and um, I really stayed away from it, but I didn't really have a yearning to watch it in the sense that Moon Knight is more of a. I don't know, I maybe put him in the same category for me, like Iron Fist and, um, you know, some of the lesser known characters. But when I collected comics, there were some interesting runs with Knight, uh, Moon Knight. So he had he has that type of Daredevil-ish um, place, although Daredevil would be more prominent. It had better consistent runs. Moon Knight would, be, would come out and you'd catch a really interesting take on it. And from what the show... Looks like it. Looks like they took all of them and combined them. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, when you're getting into the Marvel Disney shows, this one, again, it's kind of a part in the sense where I don't feel that this one cared or wanted to even bother saying they're in the MCU. And well, what's going on, I guess you can't. And I'm not one of those guys who says, oh, I need the other heroes around. Why didn't they help? You know, two gods are fighting in Egypt or whatever, but there's that feeling that it was made where they didn't know where it would be. Because back in the day in the comics, Marvel, they would come out with new branding labels, like DC would have Vertigo, and Marvel had uh, Marvel Knights, and it was something about the character comics code at the time, and they would put more you know, adults theme stuff with a little bit more blood and heavier storylines on this, you know, sister label of Marvel. And I think that that's what they might have been going for with a TV show where they didn't want to exactly throw in colorful characters or colorful personalities in that sense that were already established. Maybe they could or maybe they couldn't. I'm not sure, but it doesn't feel super connected in any way. But Six episodes in, and it's one of those, you know, six, six episodes in total, but as I'm six episodes in, I'm going, this feels like it could have been trimmed down and made better. So it's one of those weird places that, although I love things like The Flash, I shit on it because of 22 episodes, and a lot of them are garbage and just don't go anywhere. I'm not interested in... How many times you're going to fall in love and break apart and things like that. And it's that formula. Although I find greatness in it in, in that sense. This is six episodes. So if I'm going by, you know, Daredevil and Jessica Jones, uh, you know, episodes when I thought it fit perfect and it had that blend. This is maybe just a envision of the, you know, people who are making it going, this is what it's going to be. But. You have so much going on. Either you cut out a portion of it to make it more streamlined, or you add another two episodes and re-edit the pacing of it. That's really my only gripe. I mean, again, this is not going to be um, quickly grasped by a lot of fans of Marvel. I don't think this is going to um, really wow people and get them into this you know, club in that sense of, you know, 
It doesn't reach out and bring you in very easily. And WandaVision did this too. Now, WandaVision has become my maybe my favorite of all the series from the risk they took at the first three, four episodes, how they ended it, what it meant to the value of now um, Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness, which I should point out that it is a negative in the sense of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness you could feel the weight, there's not enough weight in the movie if you've never watched WandaVision, if you don't know Wanda since only Infinity Endgame, where she loses vision, but there's not much depth in going into it afterwards. So, you have six episodes, crazy topics, a guy with multiple personalities, disassociative identity disorder, um, and it impacts the quote-unquote superhero aspect of him in a fun way i thought you have an amazing actor um i know him from a lot of things but he pulls it off here remarkably just really well done i wish that there was a little less um humor coming from the main one of the main guys i mean guys i guess i mean main personalities because if one of is a serious Merc and the other one is the, you know, <clears throat> carefree whatever, I thought they would be, you know, it just, it kind of draws me out a little bit. But on, and as a whole, there's some great cinematography here. Music is excellent. Um, the theme is a little crazy, but it's a wild ride that just has a little bit of pacing problems for me. But it, maybe it has to be done the way they tell the story. It's a lot to say. If I'm not if I'm not giving spoilers, I got to say a lot of nonsense because you got a guy with multiple personality disorders, or how are they? You know, disassociative identity disorder, and you've got this trope of what's real, what's not. Is he in a, a sane asylum? Is he? Is it real? Is it? You know, and there's this little side plot undertone that's revealed at the end which i thought was cool but it's gonna get lost on people i think there's so many iterations of the character in the comics like i said and then they tried to blend them all in i had a great run of um moon knight too but um risky this is a risky endeavor i just it just feels like it there's a weight to this that's a little more heavier than normal especially when you're dealing with gods and afterlife and you know um you know those are certain aspects but i will say something there was an opportunity here i thought for the villain to make a real quick turn and surprise everybody so no spoilers in a sense but ethan hawk is the quote-unquote villain in a sense he was Khonshu's avatar. So Moon Knight is an avatar of Khonshu, the god of the night sky. And his avatar is the Moon Knight. And it's his hand in the world since he made an agreement with the gods. And the gods are not to interfere. He broke that agreement and was banished Khonshu. There's some ridiculousness in some of this aspects with uh, what the gods are. And they play on it very well. it's hard to explain but the god has this avatar ethan hawk was his former avatar so i guess throughout the years he'll pick certain people who will be his fist of vengeance and ethan hawk was a former one a little bit since it goes into that but not too much that it you know derails the show in any case there's a moment where um, Ethan Hawke's character is trying to bring his god back. A god that will be proactive. So, if Kanchu punishes those who have done evil, Ethan Hawke's character wants to um, kill them before they do anything. And is that argument of, so you're going to kill someone who, well, not you, but Ethan Hawke, in a sense, uh, with Isaac's character, 
We've got too so many names. It's Mark Spencer, Stephen Grant. Um, and um, Ethan Hawke's trying to explain, but my god will kill them before they do the evil, and then is that argument also? He'll kill someone as a child before they commit the murder 30 years or later. And is that back and forth about, you know, would you kill Hitler, blah, 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 that type of thing. And that's the aspect difference of the gods. Contra is more, you've done bad, you're going to be punished now. And, um, damn it, I don't know. It's, uh, Harrow is Ethan Hawke's character, but he's trying to raise um, some god. I don't fucking remember. But there's uh, battles, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And at one point, Ethan Hawke is bring, he's able to get the god resurrected or whatever. You know, released from the prison or whatever, and he says that she, the, the god says you're unbalanced. Your balance of your scales are off, and he's like, "Yeah, I know I'm not worthy, but I have thousands of them waiting for you around the world." So, what Ethan Hawke has been doing since he hasn't been the Moon Knight is using a portion of uh, her power. To weigh people's souls. So he'll go up to you, you know, do you, uh, he'll do weigh your soul, and you're dead if you're a bad or whatever. And if you're good, he's like, this person is a good soul. Now, all those people around the world are ready for her to come and take over as an avatar. But she decides on him. And she says, no, you're what I need. Now, in this moment, I thought it would have been fucking brilliant if Ethan Hawke was like, no, wait, I'm not worthy. And... And they would have continued this later, but they didn't. And it was such a moment. Oh, I thought it would have been fucking genius where he would have been like, no, hold on. I did all this because you are the one I believe in. Why would you use me as an avatar? I am unbalanced. I haven't balanced my scales. And all these people around the world, he's telling her, look, though, they're waiting for you. And she's like, no, I got a new you. Now, Kanchu uses that later in the sense that. He's telling this other god, you know, you're not, it's not going to work. Um, uh, Amit, I think the god's name is, and you picked a bad avatar, whatever. And the fact that Contra picked a broken avatar because his brain's fucked up. That side plot, that deep stuff with Mark Spencer and Stephen Grant's pretty good. But again, it's a little um, pacing um, issues for me. Just that nitpicking, but like I said, overall, I really liked the show. Um, one episode I went back on, and, you know, because there's so much happening, you might miss something. So, I don't know if that's really a knock on the show. This might not be for everybody. I really enjoyed it. I, I might put it in, you know, it, there's so many shows now that a good consistency, and they're good, so... I don't really have that feeling of dread if it's coming out, but I wasn't really super interested. I stayed away from most of the trails and stuff. Watching it, they pulled off um, a remarkable feat in some aspects. Uh, great actors, some deep stuff, some real psychological craziness, uh, realities, uh, Egyptian gods, historical. I mean, it tries to do a lot and tell this little underlying like two layers you know how these things work you got the plot the subplots and and i think it gets a little muddled at times as you're drawing out from what you you would expect the show to keep going forward with now let's take daredevil's first season slow burn but excellent right i don't recommend that like i recommend daredevil season two if you want to watch a comic book happen so this could be it's we need to get all this stuff out of the way cement it because you didn't do it in other things first so let's say disney had jessica jones iron fist they had that whole run from netflix on you could put moon knight at the end of a season of daredevil or one of those shows and prepare us for him it's not so this is all eight so i'll give it that it's its origin pilot episode first season six episodes i really like it but i don't know if it's something that's going to be grabbed understood 
and enjoyed by general audiences. I think that would be my only type of real negative. Because um, the humor and stuff that pulls me out every once in a while from a character that I didn't expect or something like that, it's okay. You know, it just makes me roll my eyes a little bit. But uh, when I try to take my, my own enjoyment out of it and go, okay, well, how would this work? And the parts are great. There's some, there's some shots in this movie that are fucking fantastic. Some great scenes and dialogue and this story is pretty deep and crazy so i think it's a success as as a you know someone takes this idea and they love it they want to you know for one reason or another marvel chose moon knight right like you have a slew of characters and now we got she hulk coming which the anim- the cgi looks a little weird on the trailer but just, you know, I'm going to be looking forward to it. Uh, I think I'm going to start to do, uh, I, I think I got the Peacemaker, which I've heard great things about. I'm dying to watch that. Go back to Titans. But Marvel's doing pretty good in this TV endeavor they have, the Disney Plus or whatever it is. So I'm going to give this a plus, um, you know, positive review. But I'm understanding some of the problems people are going to have. I can see people totally hating this show. And not on, you know, major merits, unless I was convinced. I mean, we all can be convinced. Um, There's just a lot to deal with. Uh, You know, like I said, six episodes, and you feel like it might have been too long, where it's because of the pacing, why not just add two more and really flesh out things that happened. They did this really well with Jessica Jones and, you know, some of the other shows that were really shit on by the public and that's the general audiences, but I just really love them. Although I will be objective and say, you know, the worst is Iron Fist and that and the flaws it has. I'm not going to tout it as, you know, work of art. This might change my mind in the future, like, WandaVision did, like looking back and watching it and seeing how fucked up things really were and what was really going on and how what a risk they took and uh, captivates me and it brings me back to it. This is a show that will bring me back to it. I'm going to have to watch it again. I know it. Um, the aspects of it, like I said, that draw you apart, like is reality, reality and it's played on, and you got to be a little careful, I think. Um, so, in that sense, without spoilers, for the most part, uh, as I do these things, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. I do have a maybe a little warning going off that this is not... Like, I'm not expecting to go online and see everybody loved it. But for what it does and what it tries to do, it's just insane. It's a wild fucking story that is risky. And like like I said, you chose to do Moon Knight. I mean, yes, he's got this Batman sort of feel, but Batman don't deal with fucking gods and summon his mummy Moon Knight armor, healing armor suit and... You know, like I said, uh, action, the story, I just think there's a little bit of a flaw there in how it's pieced together. Because you've got this superhero arc sort of story, right? they got to stop uh, Hiro, Ethan Hawke's character, from raising Amid. And uh, there's other there's gods and there's avatars and Egyptian, all that stuff. You've got this other plot of, like, his reality, reality, and what's real and what's not. And then you've got this character study of this split personality, uh, identity disorder, disasso- whatever, disassociative disorder, that really has to come to the forefront at one part because they're, you know, spoilers, at some point they're gonna, they, get ba- they get judged and balanced and they have to tell this story of, you know, it's actually in the script where the Oh, this is hilarious, but there's this hippopotamus um, Egyptian goddess, Tower it, uh, Tower it, 
however the fuck it's pronounced. And she tells him, like, you know, go figure this out. And they have to come to a head of them reaching into each other. You know, Mark Spencer, you know, Stephen Grant, and it's just, it's hard to even, you know, talk about without going to real depth about the episodes, but there's uh, identity crisis and, you know, uh, uh, you have to realize you have to talk these things out and reveal what actually happened in the past. Some some of the characters don't remember things and, you know, who's taken over the body and when did their lives bleed into each other? Why did it start now? There's a lot to deal with, with you know, and it's just, uh, I was always surprised by a, um, another Egyptian avatar of a love interest that happened. <clears throat> I wasn't too, I wasn't bothered, bothered by it, but it looked a little weird in the way they pulled it off. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking it's not the strongest part, but it's there and it fits in. It doesn't seem like it's out of nowhere. And like I said, this Ethan Hawke Harrow moment that I would have turned the script on, it, it's not that it ruins it or anything. It does give me... Um, as a creative mind, you know, just this moment of, like, that's where I would have done something really fucking interesting there. You know, uh, like, he's so dedicated. Then Kachu could have brought it up later, like, you were, the one you chose in Avatar was unbalanced, and he killed himself because of that. Things like that. In any case, we got Moon Knight. <clears throat> I don't know what, I don't know what show this is in the number of fucking Marvel shows. There's so many and they're so good, right? I, I just don't see bad ones. Although, if I want to be uh, the critic, I would maybe say, you know, one is, you know, it's not as good as the other, but cohesive TV universe now, that's pretty good. I mean, I can't wait to watch the Marvel one, Kamala Harris, I think. Ah, that's the vice president, isn't it? Uh, but anyway. There's that show, you know, there's so much good stuff that I know is out there, and some that might not be that good that I'll take a chance on. I still want to get back to, like, Titans and, you know, things like that, the Doom Patrol. I don't even know if I'll ever get back to the Flash and that universe with Supergirl and, yeesh, and all those shows that have ended. There's just too much to wrap my head around when I'm going through 22 episodes, and I got to... You know, these at least you can feel this, that saying of uh, this was meant for, you should do a TV series back in the day. Uh, the Bionic Man, the first ones were like movie, little movies. They, these have that feel of uh, the Night Stalker. Um, you know, can it become, uh, you know, in the swing of things with everything else? And I think it can. I think you could easily see this start in season two and everybody's caught up. You got the gist of it that the pilot episode had to be done, or the pilot season for six episodes, and you not only had to tell a superhero story with a villain, and stakes that are, you know, what's at stake, and then show this real psychological um, aspect of uh, an identity disorder impacting the hero and his past, and what made it, who they really are, what is real. There's so many layers here. A, a real an achievement that I even like it. I think is um, part of this, and the aspect that people probably love this, and that's going to be really the marking of a consistently good show or run of shows. WandaVision, Winter Soldier, whatever Loki. These shows are really pretty. They're good. Borderline on great. Like, real achievements and risk-taking. Look at the animated show, the What If show. And, you, and then they're piecing it together. Put a little bit of this and that in. And that's why I said that from the beginning of this. This doesn't feel like it's part of the MCU in that they tried. But hey, you can see this running and then all of a sudden you know, he runs into Power Man or Luke Cage and... Or just you make them on the new defenders, that would be fine. 
I could see that coming. I am interested in a season two for sure. And I think, you know, my concern of people who aren't comic book readers and can you get into the first season of this and really wrap your head around it? Yeah, sure. I don't want to insult uh, audiences. They're fucking kids. Uh, people don't give them enough credit. It's, will you enjoy it? I think this is enjoyable enough. These actors are fucking phenomenal. I mean, I Oscar Isaac, whatever. I didn't like him in the Star Wars movies, but... He did that robot AI movie that was fucking awesome. And he's just brilliant in this. Um, the way the guy who plays Loki, is, you could feel him. In these aspects, like, he's good at his fucking job. It just makes it so much easier. You watch some of these things with no, you know, powerhouses in it. And I don't know, is that a good thing or bad thing? Like, I think it's a great thing with the new Wheel of Time show. They don't know nobody in the show. They're all nobodies. But they have a quiet presence. Like, they could be breakout actors. And that's a talent, I guess, as a, somebody who goes and picks these people out. But this is amazing. You get this level of talent working on the TV shows. That saying about it should be a, it should be a better, you know, TV thing. They'll pick uh, Batman vs. Superman, right? The fucking Snyder disaster shitty fucking movie. Maybe that would have worked better in six episodes. But you could have done a real Batman vs. Superman and left Doomsday to fuck out. And like, and, and just in that aspect, like, can something be better off as a, you know, a six hour show? Um, you know, in general, there's that thing you talk about with your friends if you're into these type of things. I'm going to give this a thumbs up, a risk taking crazy adventure a little bit of a mix up with the flow but it could be done on purpose and i'm saying look this is what we want to do but for me it works great in the 12 episode you know the eight episode um netflix runs where you can have that eight episode seven and eight and you knew it was coming and you knew it would be slow and it would be a lot of exposition and character development and while keeping track of all these subplots. And again, this is layered with layers of layers and this nuance to things that be kind of hard to pick up on. I just happen to love the comics. I stopped collecting in like 2010-ish. There are some runs that are really good with Moon Knight, but it was never my favorite. Love the costumes. And how they've mixed that up here with the different iterations of him was brilliant. Um, so I think they actually do that in the comics too, where someone takes the run and says, you know, this is how we're going to look at everything. Hey, you're in a insane asylum, you know, you're a real crazy person. Moon Knight never was, Moon Knight. like, is that any of it real? And, you know, he's got the aspect of like the battle suit and he's got the, you know, tuxedo, white tuxedo suit. And it's just, it works for me. It makes me smile. There's a lot of times of that in this. I just like, it's weird for me to come on and just say, oh, I love this thing or whatever. Yeah, I really like this show. But being honest or whatever, I think it could be a hard swallow for new viewers. And not in an insulting way, but just a, you know, okay, who is this character? Like, why do I care? And for, for the most part, that's why you put Spider-Man in it or, you know, Daredevil or something. Just to have that connective tissue where it kind of fits when when... The Netflix Marvel show started. They didn't have the people in the show, but they talked about it a lot. Oh, the Green Man, or the what happened in New York, and at the time, Agents of Shield was on, and they were the direct connective tissue, which was a fucking phenomenal show. Agents of Shield, if you've never watched it, is fucking awesome. Get through the first season. That's all I say. It's a little hard to get into, but once you get in, it's one of the best shows Marvel's ever done. And these Netflix type shows with Disney, I think they're doing a really superb job. Some are better than others. This for me is really fun, interesting, thought provoking, and an interesting way. I mean, you know, some of my podcasts you would know, but I'm really into psychology and neurology, evolutionary biology, evolutionary psych, the whole gambit. I'm just fascinated by how people's brains work and how magicians fool us and mentalists and how 
all these things kind of work how our brains bring in information like there's this thing where a magician can show you how they do the trick and they still can fool you with it it's yeah it's just it's a fun romp in that sense but again i'll point out the critic in me who says but these moments of surreal this and do that blended with action and then in-depth character study or some real serious shit kind of um feels a little weird and it's for me like i said i know the character i know everything about him in that sense i know about his psychological states and what writers have done with it in the comics i have a grasp idea of what where he fits in the marvel universe this is gonna be a little tough i think for general audiences and i guess that's where i thought to leave this um I do recommend the show highly. Watch it, make up your own decisions. Is it too muddled? Is it too layered? Did they try to pull up too much with too many, you know, in depth things that breaks the flow of what you were enjoying and for what reasons? Because that's kind of how I see it. You know, do you enjoy the roller coaster ride of a show? Well, do you want to go to the top, go all the way back down, stay there for a little bit, and shoot back up? This, these kind of themes and how they work well with um, the, you know, the content you have, the resources, and how this all works now in this post-pandemic, oh, still pandemic era. Is it, is it the way it's done now? Is, you know, is this a new formula? And if they could pull it off, fine. It's going to be insane. I could just see this character, you know, if Oscar Isaac really likes it, being a real way for him to enjoy his craft, right? He's got personalities to work with. Some right after, you know, talking to each other, different aspects. And then you reveal maybe a new one. And I guess for an actor, that's got to be really fucking fun. Uh, I think uh, Doctor Strange, um, Benedict the actor who plays Dr. Strange has talked about that in a sense where, you know, he loves playing the snarky, whatever, and get to play different aspects of him. This is really out there, but a lot of fun if you're into this Egyptian mythology and how that works, and it's basically revealed that Kanchu, the god, almost revealed them to the world, and because he won't stop meddling, he fucking was banished, but generally they're saying all the gods have avatars and they work in the world through them, so to keep secret. And that's like, you know, part of the show that is turned on its head because um, if Amit's loose, gets loose, she fucks the gods over, you know, it's Kanshu who has to save them with his avatar. So, yeah, you know, you got the twisty twisty and the you know, the turning of the head, of, of you know, the concept. And it's it's you know, brilliantly done in some parts. It may, this might be the most, like, this might be the best performance of an actor of any of the shows, which is saying a lot. You know, the WandaVision actors, uh, whatever. For some reason, Oscar Isaacs is just that good. It makes me think of Natalie Portman on some work that she does because I'm I love her as an actress. This guy just fucking does it all, and they're, they're in a movie together. Awesome fucking movie, I loved it too. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but um, Moon Knight. Yeah, there we go. I'm fucking drifted off and ranting, rambling. Moon Knight. I recommend it. Craziness, zaniness. On multiple levels that possibly could, you know, break the flow of what you're enjoying. And I think that's basically how I'll end this. Watch it. Give it a shot. It's just, like I said, he, this guy is fucking awesome. And he acts. He's great at it. You know, give him fucking more characters to play. Just... You know, and, and like I said, the supporting characters, it was just uh, uh, really good. Nothing stands out. Like, you watch some shows and movies and you go, oh, God. 
you know, the supporting cast is fucking garbage. And, you know, it feels, um, you know, it doesn't feel a game. It doesn't feel top notch. Uh, this does. It's just movie magic on TV. The actors elevated, and I totally recommend it. Give Moon Knight a shot. Till next time, everybody, take care. Hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend. And yes, I will probably do a fucking podcast on gun control. I did the one on abortion, and this is just insanity. So stay safe. Tell your family you love them. Hug your friends and family and children. And till next time.